We are going to get to the amazing, positive, wonderful things about living in New York City that you have to look forward to when you move here in 2023. I feel like I have an obligation to tell you like what you are really getting into, especially if you're just an average Joe like me. But there's so many negative things that we do need to address first. If you didn't know, I've lived here for over six years now. I've moved 10 different times in 10 different neighborhoods. I lived here throughout the pandemic. I didn't leave. So I have like really strong sense from my own experience, the changes that have happened and how the city has evolved and the advice that I gave last year may not pan over to this year. I'm not gonna be trying to dissuade you from moving here. That's never my point. You gotta keep that deep love if you're gonna move here right now. So what is the new information that you need to know? What are some of the classic tips? I'm just speaking from my heart here. It's not gonna be the same experience as somebody else. Like there's probably someone who's gonna watch this video who's lived here their whole life and they're like, what is this girl talking about? I have lived here for enough time to like form an opinion on it. I do call it home here and I think that's what matters. So safety is the first thing we do need to address. This is one of the biggest realities of living in New York City. And if you don't know what this is, it's an extra lock I had to buy on Amazon. You can undo everything, unlock all the doors, open the door, and then it comes out. This is just extra support in case someone does break into this lock and this lock and through this lock. As you saw the lock on my door, I had to get another one, which is not a great feeling, but it is a reality. I've been living in this apartment for a couple years. I do live by myself. I've never had an issue with anything at all. It's honestly been a fantastic experience living here, but we recently have had a package thief, which probably could happen to you. And there's really nothing you can do about it. They're like, you, know, you just gotta suck it up or move out. In the last six to like nine months, I've had eight or nine packages stolen. Again, it's a typical experience. Right now, I don't have the money to live in a building with security, with a doorman. Maybe in six months I will, maybe in three months I will. I'm manifesting that shit, believe me. But at the moment, I don't. And you do pay the price to not have someone there monitoring who enters and exits the building. So thus we have this random person off the street getting buzzed into our building. I don't know who is doing it, but the guy apparently doesn't live in our building. He has access to every floor in our building and is stealing people's shit from the lobby and in front of our doors but it's something that I have to live with because it, I've made a choice to live in this apartment. I've made a choice to live in this city. And if I don't like it, if I don't like what comes with it, then I can leave. So I'm taking precautions now to make myself feel safer. I'm getting my packages delivered elsewhere so I can pick them up and then bring them here or else I can fork out the money and go live somewhere with the doorman. You know, this is a reality. Like you're gonna get stolen from you. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't. I've talked about it in one other video, but when I first moved here, I did get robbed by my landlord <laughs> in my first apartment, which was a horrible experience. But like, I didn't think that kind of shit would happen to me before I lived here. I don't know, maybe some of you are from a small town. I know when I lived in a small town, not saying that you're naive or anything, but I definitely was. I really didn't think any of those bad things could happen to me because I had good intentions with everything. And because I was a nice person, people would trust me and not try to me over but I was wrong moving here and living here one of the biggest lessons I've learned is like developing a thick skin New York has taught me so many lessons thus that's not what this video is about but it's still important to say so I digress safety has gotten a lot worse since the pandemic in my building definitely but also on the subways it's a harsh reality for like 90% of us living in New York City or even a little outside the city that we don't have the money to spend on Ubers and Lyfts every day you have to take the subway you have to take you know Metro North or whatever I don't know, whatever subway line, New Jersey Transit. And you just have to deal with the fact that it's not safe, especially in the winter time. Subways are where a lot of homeless people can get a good nap. It is important to have empathy for homeless folks. City is not taking care of them, just thrusting them into a mental hospital to take medication against their will. That's no way to handle a situation. Just to like remove homeless people from the subways and put them anywhere just to make it feel safer for you know everyone else, that's not solving any issue. So my biggest advice for you when you're riding the subway, just mind your business. Like don't make eye contact. You know, I'm a human being. I wanna wear my headphones when I'm on the the subway. I don't want to not wear my headphones when I'm on the subway. I at least turn the noise canceling on. That's like the only way I can stay sane during my com <laughs> during my commute. You can put your headphones in, turn the noise canceling on, and still be aware of your surroundings. Safety wise, yes, it's gotten out of control. It's not great. Last week alone, riding the subway, four times someone lit up a cigarette on the subway car. I have never seen it this bad. That drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. <laughs> but also unrelated to safety, Ridership has risen a lot. We now have the normal 7.30 to 9 a.m. and then again from like 4.30 to 6 where the subway cars are jam-packed. Things are definitely back to normal in that regard, but I would say they're not 
quite as bad as it was pre-pandemic. I don't have to wait for like subway cars to pass because I can't fit on them. There is a percentage of people working from home or like having the hybrid work schedules, which makes the subways a little bit more bearable. Corporations and government don't love that, but it's better for ridership for us who are riding the subways because I don't like being a sardine. So as far as safety goes, I don't really see it getting any better. Whether you live downtown or uptown, east, west, I don't know, wherever, it's a city. Wherever you go, there's gonna be some sort of safety threat. So you just gotta be aware, you just gotta be smart, really just do what you can to protect yourself. COVID-wise, there's no mask mandates anymore. It really feels like it's 2019 all over again. There are still a handful of people wearing masks on the subway though. I being one of them, I don't wanna get the common cold. I don't wanna get the flu. Like I'd rather wear my mask. People aren't really telling each other when they're getting it, when they're not. It's not like a big deal anymore, which whatever your opinion on that is, it's just sort of how the culture is here. People are back in clubs. People are back in jam packed bars. COVID is just a part of life now. And when you go out, that's just the risk that you take. You know, that's either fine for you or it's not. So you either go out or you don't, but businesses are not shutting down anymore because of it. Knock on wood, I still have never gotten COVID. Knock on wood, like we're knocking, we're knocking. Uh, I don't know how that's happened or maybe I, I am not symptomatic. Either way, I'm not gonna question it. I'm just gonna like enjoy it. <laughs> the city is back in business. That's all I gotta say about that. I would say that if you're interested in working from home at any capacity, whether it's full-time or hybrid, that's definitely something that you can negotiate now where that might not have been a thing before the pandemic or last year or even the year before. Maybe you have a dog or you have a new kid or something like there is flexibility in that way. I think New York City is just gonna keep going in that direction. That's been the, one of the biggest shifts I've seen in New York. People are waking up to the capitalist rat race almost and are wanting a work-life balance. Like God forbid, we have a work-life balance. The US is so bad about that. I don't have a hybrid schedule, but ideally that would be what I would want because I'm not living in New York City to stay in my apartment all day. I wanna be out, you know, I wanna be working hands-on with my team. I really want that, like that face-to-face -face interaction. I need that as a human being. This is just for me, you know, it doesn't have to be for you. But I also would like the time to not have to worry about putting on makeup to be able to go, to have to go to work or taking time to steam my clothes in the morning so I'm presentable at the office. Like my presentability really doesn't have anything to do with my ability to do my job right. But it is nice to go into the office sometimes too. So like a balance of that is ideal. Depends on the company, but, but more and more companies are getting getting on board. So if that's something you're looking for, that's a huge plus. Let's talk about apartments. I feel like a lot of you might wanna update on what it's like to get an apartment now and what I predict for 2023. 2022 was an absolute shit show. Maybe you've seen on TikTok, like the lines around the block, just waiting to view an apartment. The experiences that I've seen people go through to get an apartment last year, Basically, the only luck I heard people having getting an apartment here was if they knew somebody who was putting up an apartment before it went on the market. Once an apartment was put on Street Easy, it was gone within minutes. The percentages of rent increases were mind blowing. Some people were getting 100% rent increases from their landlords. Their rent literally doubling. And the fact that it was legal is a huge issue. I get it, as a landlord, sure, you're trying to make up for lost money from the pandemic, but that's not our fault. It sucks that if you're one of the ones to stay through the pandemic you were the ones keeping food on the landlord's table and now they they turn around unless you're in a rent controlled unit they turn around and raise your rent by 100 percent if you're a good tenant i feel like your landlord should reward you but that's just not how things go so a lot of people have had to move or move away and that just further divides the city like the rich get richer and the poor get poor but anyways i think like the average rent cost here for a one bedroom is four thousand dollars thirty five hundred to four thousand dollars i cannot fathom paying that much in rent. Like, are we all just crazy here? Do I see rent prices getting better? Yes. Rent prices can't stay super high forever. You know, it's gonna get to a point where really no one can pay. Either that or like all the culture has left the city and all there's left are like influencers. <laughs> but as the rent gets higher, it's just harder and harder to qualify for a par an apartment by yourself. If you're trying to apply for an apartment by yourself, you know, it's standard information. You gotta have 40 times the rent or more in salary a year. And if you don't, you have to have a guarantor who has to make 80 times your rent so that you know they can pay for their rent and potentially yours if for some reason you're not able to pay. Oh God, I have a whole video on how to get an apartment here. And that video still stands, uh, even though I made it a couple of years ago, but you're welcome to check it out, I'll link it above. This apartment inflation just adds 
to the anxiety of it all. There's so much anxiety around every aspect of living here, especially around your basic needs of just wanting to feel safe when you're walking down the street, wanting to feel safe when you're going to work, wanting a roof over your head, wanting your bills to be paid, being able to afford going to get fresh groceries and fresh produce. Those things just feel like such work sometimes here and that weight on you all the time can just make you feel like it's impossible therefore i think you knowing this before coming here is really important yes life here is so exciting there's so much opportunity here if you don't know what career path you want to go into there's so many options here for you to figure that out unlike any other place in the world which is so exciting but that freedom does come at a cost there are ways to survive here if you move here without a lot of money a hundred percent it just depends on your own lifestyle honestly but for a lot of people, that's just not the lifestyle that they want because that's not the lifestyle that's been shown to them on the internet with all these aesthetic New York City videos. They're fun to watch. I watch them a lot, actually. They're very relaxing and no shade to the creators. Realistically, that's just not the case for so many of us. And it's easy to get our heart broken if that's the New York City that we've seen and we have our heart set on. I'm on a morning walk right now to prove a point that routine is really important. Routine is something that I really lacked when I first moved here. I was just sort of all over the place and didn't feel like I could put my feet down anywhere because I moved around so much. And so I didn't really have anything that grounded me. Okay, I've made it to a park. So I guess another thing I'm trying to say is try and let yourself give it a chance here. There are probably a bunch of people who had moved here and then moved away after a couple months just because it wasn't what they expected. But try and set yourself up so that way you can problem solve for at least a year. Like no matter what happens in that year, you're gonna stick it out because it really takes time to build a community a year minimum sometimes it's easier depending on like what job you have and if you don't work from home versus if you do the circumstances are different for everybody if you're struggling to make friends in the city that's very valid because I also have that problem too but there's just so many clubs and so many places you can volunteer there's something for everybody here Sorry, helicopter obvi but you don't want that what if right if you leave too soon because you weren't prepared enough when you got here and that's why I say make sure to save up like at least ten thousand dollars before you come here or have a place to say that's not going to charge you money. $10,000 could easily be spent depending on what you're looking for just on moving itself. But another piece of advice is to let yourself be a tourist too. Don't let anyone shame you from wanting to go to the Statue of Liberty or go to the Rockefeller Center or do all like the touristy Christmas things to do. Those are the only things that a lot of people know about when they get here and it takes time to figure out how to move like a local and feel comfortable going to neighborhoods that really only locals go to, right? You gotta start somewhere. The staff working at the tourist places are local so they know like the local places to go so they're great resources too and it's also good to let yourself do the tourist things too because when people come to visit you people will come to visit you here maybe not necessarily to visit you but to see the city and you'll just happen to be here and they'll reach out to try and stay at your place for free that's how it goes one of the keys to happiness here there are many keys to happiness one of them is to lower your expectations. Move here thinking that you're gonna have a terrible time and then let, it, let yourself be surprised. I think a lot of people come here to start over. I definitely did that. You can reinvent yourself however you want. Nobody knows you. They don't know anything about you and that's really freeing. And that's also why I recommend if you can or want to, moving here by yourself. I saw a reel on Instagram that was like, if you took a year and dedicated it to being the bravest version of yourself, what could happen? Putting yourself out there, doing things you wouldn't normally do do, really expand your life experience and this is the perfect place to do that. There's very much a possibility you could go out and try these new things and it doesn't work out and that's probably what it will be like 95% of the time but that extra 5% could actually change your life and the beauty about here is that there's just options for everything and everyone. I'm not saying that if you moved here with friends or a significant other that you'd be held back by any means but you'd be making decisions also based on them. So on the positive side of things, God, you're gonna be tested here and it's really gonna show you what you're made of. This place is the most exciting place I've ever lived in my life. And I'm so excited that you're gonna get to experience it and have your own story to tell and just a short amount of time. You deserve a new beginning. You deserve a chance to recreate yourself. So what do you think? Do you agree with what I said? Do you disagree with what I said? Do you have any more advice that you'd like to share? Leave it in the comments. Start a conversation. And if you have any extra questions, leave them in the comments because if I don't know the answer, someone else will. If this was helpful for you, even a little bit, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. And good luck with your move. You got this, babe. Bye.